the infamous 16 to 35. We all own one, and it's very likely one of the first lenses that you ever picked up for your camera. But it's time to move on. This controversial video is likely going to rustle some feathers, as this lens is a very popular choice in the industry, particularly for videographers and photographers starting out on their journey. And I used this lens for years as my go-to workhorse underwater lens, and this realization is truly something that I wish that I had learned sooner. The 16 to 35 is hindering your work, and it is producing some of the most generic looking images you can capture. Now, before you jump into the comments, hear me out. Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Tom Park, and I'm an underwater and wildlife cinematographer. Throughout this series, we're discussing the world of filmmaking and cinematography, where I'll teach you some of the things that I've learned over the last decade working in the film industry. If you're interested in this sort of thing, subscribe and let me know down below what you film and what you're using your 16 to 35 mil for. One of the reasons the 16 to 35 is a staple in most beginner shooters camera bags is that this lens is quite versatile. The lens covers a wide focal range from 16mm for landscapes to 35 for a touch of zoom. It's a go-to lens for a lot of tourism, travel, street and underwater photography. And if you've invested into a 2.8 model, it allows for some slight depth of field at the tight end. But what this lens makes up for in versatility, it lacks in mastery. In my opinion, the 16 to 35mm look provides the most generic looking image available. It's not wide enough to be interesting, nor is it tight enough to provide close-ups or to produce any real depth of field. On either end of its focal length, it produces such a classically generic image, from sorta wide to sorta not tight. Now, I've held this opinion about this lens ever since I first bought it so many years ago for topside filmmaking, and as such, I almost never used this lens above the water. But it took me a lot longer to realize that this was also the case for underwater and that this lens was forcing me to shoot in a way that was holding back my creativity. And looking back at my work shot with this lens, it was creating really generic looking footage. Having dug a little deeper into why I feel this way about this lens, I've narrowed it down to a few key reasons. The first is that 16 to 35s have a very limited and odd perspective. This lens can create great wide angle shots, but when looking through your monitor, it's almost never wide enough. In filmmaking, we almost never use wide angle lenses, unless we have a very good reason to do so. Usually, this reason is because we are looking for a unique perspective or we're looking to capture a vast open scene. And at 16mm, the lens can't really do either of these things. The lens is at an odd focal length where it unnaturally looks somewhat normal. It doesn't have that natural looking lifelike 24mm look, but it also just isn't wide. It's just unnatural and for me, it just feels like a generic iPhone style perspective. On the same line, it's also almost never as wide as we think it is when we put it on our camera. And the vast scene that we're looking to capture is almost never done any justice at 16mm, where we always end up clipping our corners or not being able to fit our subject in frame and compose the shot the way we want to. Unfortunately, this is the case both above and below the water, with 16mm just never being enough to produce anything unique or to actually shoot anything wide. On the tight end at 35mm, the lens similarly suffers from the same issues. In most scenarios, 35mm isn't tight enough to shoot headshots or to capture anything tight. Again, this focal length is just slightly tighter than our natural vision which is around 24mm and this perspective doesn't really offer anything unique. As a wide angle lens, we can't really make up for any of this either by simply moving the camera closer to our subject, as these lenses typically have quite poor close focus distances. Shooting at f4 or if you splurged at f2.8, the lens at 35mm doesn't offer all that much in the way of depth of field either. And if you are after that 35mm focal length, spending the money on a prime that will offer you f1.2 will provide a much more unique look and at half the price. To me, this lens really does provide that generic looking iPhone feel, a jack of all trades, master of none generic focal length. So what are some better options? Since having ditched my 16 to 35, I've moved all of my wide angle work over to the ultra wide angle lenses, such as the rectilinear 12 to 24 millimeters that I'm using now, or the 14 millimeter f1.8 prime if I need low light. The extra four millimeters may sound like a minuscule jump. And if we're talking about telephoto lenses, you would be absolutely right. But on the wide end, that extra four millimeters completely changes the look and feel of the lens. 12 millimeters is remarkably wider than 16 millimeters and the perspectives that you're able to capture are so much more engaging and unique than the generic look of the 16 to 35. I have seen such a shift in the way that I shoot since having left the 16 millimeters behind, 
as I'm able to get so much closer to my subject and create far more engaging compositions with this more unique perspective. Every time I go back to the 16 to 35, as I think that it may be better for this one particular scene, the lens just honestly annoys me and it forces me to revert back to the bad habits I had assumed were just normal. On the tight end, you'll capture far more engaging work with a few f1.8 prime lenses, such as a 50mm or 85mm, but if you're looking for versatility, lenses like the 24-70 f2.8 are some of my favourite choices. They capture wide angle shots from the natural 24mm looking perspective, but also have the ability to produce those tighter moments at 50 and 70mm with a good depth of field at f2.8. If you're looking to level up your work and capture footage or images that are unique and engaging, it's time to put the 16-35mm down. There's a reason it's never used on more professional end projects, and it's because it offers a very generic look. It excels at providing versatility over uniqueness. Alright, I think I've ripped on this lens enough for one video. I just want to end this off by saying that I did use this lens professionally as a workhorse for years. Even after ripping on it all video, I concede that it can do the job, and it can do it pretty well. But if you're looking to enhance your work and level up, well, you know what to do. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.